Greg, I guess the, the morning after question on the Patriots 25 to six win over the jets. Uh, was it a good win or a bad win? It was a win. I, was a win. I would not say it was a good win. I mean, right. look, when the opponent, a rebuilding opponent, gives you four interceptions before even the halfway point in the third quarter, and you need to basically uh, make some defensive stands in the fourth quarter to win that game, it's not a good win. It's just not. And I, I don't know why people are trying to talk themselves into it. It, it wasn't. I mean, they a lot of the stuff that they had issues with in week one from pass protection, stopping the run, uh, getting off the field in, in, in key points. I mean, they got a little bit better at that. But in general, uh, there was a little bit of improvement incremental. Um, overall, not with the run defense. I thought it was I thought it was worse in this game. The Jets almost averaged about almost five yards a carry. And really, if they just stuck to the ground, they probably would have been in this game till the very end. Um, but no, I, I did not think it was a good win. It was a win. That, it was a win that they needed to get. They got it. Uh, let's not write home about it. Yeah, I guess in addition to the things that you mentioned uh, with the the run defense, uh, the protection obviously was uh, was rough, um, and uh, the Trent Brown injury. Uh, certainly is a huge deal. They start one tackle. They have to yank him, uh, you know, uh, Durant there uh, early in the first half just because things weren't going well. Uh, mm -hmm. It just seemed like Mac was never able to get comfortable in the pocket. I guess the question is um, how much of it was on game planning, how much of it was on personnel limitations, whether it be down a tackle or getting to know the receivers where it's just still you're not able to open things up. I guess – as you wrote in your column for Boston Sports Journal, Greg, everyone's got to be a little bit patient. And I, I think that's the problem is nobody is patient. You want to see them open it up. And it's not just to get to where you were in the best days of Tom Brady, where the offense could just march up and down the field and score. Mm -hmm. I think even seeing what you saw from Mac Jones in week one gave you enough confidence yeah. to think, OK, they can do a little more than they're doing here. And, and you yeah. didn't see it. It almost felt like a step back offensively where, I mean, just yards per attempt. Everything was even more conservative than, than it was in, in in week one in a game where you felt like they might have been able to open it up a little bit. I think that, John, I think that a lot of that was uh, opponent dependent. Um, you know, to contrast the two weeks, you had the Dolphins who uh, they brought a lot of pressure. Um you know, probably manned up a little bit more than the four, uh, than the Jets did. I want to say the 49ers because I think Robert Sala and I think 49ers. Um, but you, you, a couple of things are a couple of things are at play. Number one, uh, look, the Patriots have a plan for Mac Jones, and it it through two weeks it is bringing him along slowly. Uh, you can complain about it that if you want, or you could do what the Jets did with Zach Wilson, which is basically like let him go back there and chuck it all over the place, and you get four interceptions, and then all of a sudden, you know who knows where the Jets are right now, and whether Wilson can recover from a game like that. Uh, so I don't mind the conservative approach um, for a lot of the reasons you talked about, including what I wrote about, which is you know people just have to realize that forget the Tom Brady offense, just forget it. All right. It's it's over with. This is starting from scratch, starting from scratch with a whole bunch of people, receivers, tight ends. You have a new left guard. You have a road you know, rotating right tackles. Um, there's a lot of different things at play. I mean, Damian Harris has a little bit of experience. James White has a ton. But the other guys, they get J.J. Taylor in there when Ramondre Stevenson's out there. More new guys. But I think that in this game specifically, I think a couple of things are at play. I think that the pressure that the Patriots allowed early on, in my opinion, affected Mac Jones more than it did in week one. I thought yep. he got a little sped up, a little bit harried. Um, and then you also have to look at the the Jets' defense is zone-based. And if we've known anything from the way the Patriots have gone against Seattle and San Francisco in years past, it's, all right, they're going to hang back and cover three, some two, two deep safeties. You're going to run if they show two deep safeties. But the bigger thing is you're just going to throw underneath and you're going to go throw you're going to throw crossers and hope that your guys can break tackles and and make hay that way. Um worked at times. Uh it didn't work all the time against the Jets, but I just think it's I, I think it was really circumstances the way the offense looked in this game. 
And uh, but I do think they're layering things. And and you know, could Mac take a few more chances? Yeah, and they probably want him to. But I, I understand where they are. I understand where they're going. And I think <clears throat> this is a solid pace. I wouldn't say it's yeah. a good pace. It's solid. Well, and it wouldn't be stunning if uh, the, the game plan was, particularly when you see Wilson start chucking it all over the place, uh, you know, with, with with every other pass landing in the hands of a Patriot, that the game plan even got more conservative, uh, you know, than, than it would have been to start, which is we don't have to do a thing to win here. Just hold on to the ball. They're going to hand yeah. it to us and just – there's absolutely no reason to take any risks here or any shots or let them back into it. So combined with the protection issues that they were having and the fact that the Jets were just willingly handing over the ball every other possession, it makes sense to say just just take what they give you because they're going to give you plenty, mm-hmm. and that's what ended up pretty lopsided 25-6. to six. I guess the question is what happens when they face a good team? I'm not sure whether the Saints are going to qualify coming right. in, but certainly everybody's already looking two weeks ahead against the Bucs, and you shudder to think uh, you know, anything short of 30 points there doesn't seem like it's that it's going to be good enough. So do you think by week four they're incrementally further enough along to be able to stay competitive in a game like that? against a, 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 an elite opponent? Yeah, I think so. I mean, look, um, could they get blown out in that game? Yes. Could they win that game? Yes. I mean, look, uh, the Patriots have probably game plan that game for a while. I would not say that uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are, um, you know, exactly, uh, you know, advanced trigonometry when it comes to playing them in terms of their defensive scheme and what they do offensively. Uh, so the Patriots will have a good plan. They will take shots when needed. But the big thing is, it seems like the Patriots need, uh, they need a certain path forward. And that that includes, they have to stay one game at a time. Because all it, the worst thing that they can do is start thinking about Tampa Bay and they lose to the Saints team, which, look, they were challenged last week. But Sean Payton's a good coach. They've been challenged with COVID, travel issues, and hurricanes, and all sorts of stuff. You know, so they're in a tough spot. But Sean Payton is a damn good coach. And he's going to have that team ready to come in here. And if the Patriots aren't careful, if they're looking ahead, they're going to lose. And one and two going into Tampa is a lot different than two and one. And then all of a sudden you're staring at one and three in the face. And then, you know, that's a tough road to hope with a team that a lot of things have to come together. So I think they need to stay focused. If they can be two and one, come out of Tampa two and two, Everything is good. Keep Mac on the Ascension plan, the offense on the Ascension plan. It's not just Mac. It's Aguilar and Bourne and Hunter Henry and Jonu Smith, who look like he got a little bit beat up in this game. So yeah. th- there has to be a plan for all of them. I think there is, and I think they're following that. And I think it so far so good. It hasn't been great, but so far so good. And we'll see where it goes from there. 